Today I want to show you a few calculations regarding colligative properties. Now, colligative properties, hopefully you've read your class notes and looked through your textbook. Colligative properties are those physical properties that are directly dependent upon the presence of a solute in solution. So what we're talking about is we're talking about boiling point, we're talking about freezing point, vapor pressure, osmotic pressure is often utilized in biology classes. Okay, so how does the boiling point or how does the freezing point of a solvent change with the introduction of a solute? Okay. Now when we look at the solute that's being introduced into the solution, we must look at it, is it an electrolyte or non-electrolytes? Electrolytes are those that break into ions and conduct electricity when in solution. Now we're not worried about the conducting electricity portion here in our calculation. What we are looking at is the presence of ions because when this potassium nitrate breaks in solution, when it dissolves, it's going to produce two separate entities a nitrate ion and a potassium ion. Okay, So it's going to work as two separate entities which is going to have a different effect on the boiling point than say something like sugar that is a non-electrolyte is a molecule and doesn't split into ions. Okay, So we have to look at that. Okay? Now let's first write our formula. Now again I hope you have reviewed your class notes, looked through your textbook before diving into these calculations. So we're calculating the expected boiling point elevation of a 0.2 molal. Now this is molality. We are looking at molality when we look at colligative properties. Okay, We are looking at molality. Molality is equal to the moles of solute, in our case potassium nitrate, per kilogram of solvent. Okay, So again, please make sure that you recognize we are looking at molality, not molarity here. Okay, It's an easy thing to get confused. Okay, So our formula here is going to be equal to delta T B, we're looking at the boiling point elevation change, is equal to KB. KB is a boiling point molality constant. Okay, and this is an aqueous solution, so we're looking at water as the solvent, multiplied by the molality, okay, which is given here, 0.2. And one other thing that's often called the Van Hoff factor, it's usually just represented with a lowercase i, a Van Hoff factor. That is why it is necessary for you to look at the solute and determine is it a compound composed of ions or composed of molecules because this is composed of two ions, the potassium and the nitrate ion. So that is a Van Hoff factor of two, okay? Because it splits into two ions, two ions present, okay? Multiplied by our molality, 0.2, okay, right here. And now our Kb, Kb is a constant, okay? And you retrieve those values from your textbook there's often a data table with KB and KFs for freezing um, listed for various solvents. Okay, I've got them written here for water. This is an aqueous solution. So the KB value for water is a positive, notice boiling point elevation, positive, 0.51. So when we solve this, we are not solving for the new boiling point. We are solving for the boiling point elevation. How many degrees Celsius will the boiling point elevate compared to pure water? To pure water. So let's go 0.51 times 2 times 0.2. Okay. So do you see what I did? I went 0.51 times. 0.2, that's the molality, times 2 for the Van Hoff factor, okay? and I get a value of 0 0.204 degrees Celsius. Okay, The degrees Celsius comes from this Kb value here. Okay, This is the change in boiling point. 
Okay, the boiling point elevation. Okay, what is the new boiling point for our solution here? Well, water boils, pure water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. That's its pure boiling point. Now it is going to boil 0 0.204 degrees above that. Okay, not much change but that's mainly because we have a very low molality value. Okay? So our new boiling point of our solution is 100.204 degrees Celsius, but our boiling point elevation was just 0 0.204 degrees Celsius. Let's try a second example. This time let's look at freezing point depression. Okay? Freezing point goes down. K okay, freezing point goes down. Notice that the Kf value up here is a negative 1.86. That's because freezing points go lower while boiling points elevate with the introduction of a solute into that solvent. Okay. So let's solve this one. What is the freezing point depression? So we are looking for delta Tf of water in a solution of 17.1 grams of sucrose, okay, there's sucrose, traditional table sugar, and 200 grams of water. Okay. All right, so first thing, let's write our formula. Delta Tf is equal to Kf times the molality times the Van Hoff factor. Okay, let's put in our Kf value. Again, we just retrieved that from a data table. Negative 1.86. Okay. Our molality, we do not know what our molality is. They didn't give it to us. But we do have the Van Hall factor because sucrose, when we look at this sucrose, we recognize that that is a molecular compound. It is not composed of ions that would split and become a, a, an electrolytic or an electrolyte solution. So it has a Van Hall factor of 1. Okay. Now, we need to get this molality. Molality is equal to moles of solute, in our case, sucrose, per kilogram of solvent. Okay, well, we've got water as our solvent. So we need to get the molality value, then we can solve our formula here. Okay, well, 200 grams of water is just equal to 0.2 kilograms of water. Just a reminder on metric conversions, one kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. So let's go ahead and put that in. Okay, I'm just putting in 0.2 kilograms. That's our solvent is water. Water is our solvent. Sucrose is our dissolving substance. Okay, that's the solute. Now we need to get the moles of solute. Okay, so let's take 17.1 grams of sucrose, C12, H22, O11. Let's convert that to moles. Okay, I like to use dimensional analysis, use my railroad track set up here. One mole of sucrose. Now, we need the molar mass. So, how do we get the molar mass? We go back to our periodic table we retrieve the mass numbers for each of our elements. Okay, so we have carbon at 12.011. Okay, 12.011, and we have 12 of those in the compound. We need to retrieve a hydrogen. Okay, and hydrogen is 1.00794, and we have 22 of those in the compound and we need oxygen and it is 15.9994 and we have 11 of those in the compound. So we add all that up and we get 342.3000 it looks like. Okay, so that's our molar mass. 342.3000 Okay, that's our molar mass. So we solve this, so 
17.1 divided by the 342 value and we get 0 0.04996 moles of sucrose okay now with sig figs that would be three so I've got four sig figs here I'm carrying an extra just because I don't like to round inside of a problem okay so 0 0.04996 moles of our solute that is of our solute only of our sucrose now we solve this okay so we can go 1.86 and notice that it is negative okay times 0 0.04996 times 1 that doesn't do anything to the problem and then divide it by 0 0.2 and we get a negative notice because it is a freezing point depression negative 0 0.464628 degrees Celsius now I'm going to round this to three sig figs because of the 17.1 and the 200 here so I'm going to have negative 0 0.465 degrees Celsius that is our freezing point depression that is the change in the freezing point how many degrees Celsius it changed because of the introduction of the sucrose solute okay the freezing point of pure water is zero degrees Celsius now with the sucrose dissolved it is 0.465 degrees lower so it's zero degrees Celsius minus 0 0.465 degrees Celsius so now the new freezing point is negative 0.465 degrees Celsius. That is the new freezing point of our sugar water solution here.